Welcome back to Art Practice ASMR. In this video, I draw the different versions of Motoko Kusanagi from the Ghost in the Shell franchise. And honestly, I think my art in this video is not the best I've done. But don't worry, I actually plan on making a sequel to this video in the near future. I am currently watching the standalone complex, and I really want to talk about that. So when I finish up that series, I want to make a video. So you can look forward to that in the near future. Speaking of the near future, this video is about the Ghost in the Shell movie. And judging by the title of this video, which I should put as does the source material matter? You might be thinking that this video is about the live-action Ghost in the Shell movie, but actually, this video is about the original two-and-a-half animated movies. And that might surprise you, because those movies are known for being very good. And they are. But I recently discovered that they are very unfaithful to the source material in many ways. But before we talk about that, I just want to give a quick rundown of the production behind the series since its inception all the way to the second Ghost in the Shell movie. This franchise begins in 1989 when Masamune Shiro's manga Armored Riot Police, The Ghost in the Shell, begins publication. Then the manga series continues in 1991, when it gets a sequel called Armored Riot Police 1.5, Human Error Processor. Then in 1995, the series begins its first foray in the anime medium, with a movie called Ghost in the Shell, directed by Mamoru Oshii. Then, in 2001, the manga series gets its finale in the manga called Armored Riot Police 2 Man Machine Interface. Then, in 2004, the anime series gets a novel titled Innocence After the Long Goodbye, which is published to coincide with the new movie Ghost in the Shell 2. Innocence. And then finally, in 2008, a remake of the original movie called Ghost in the Shell 2.0 is made, featuring a bunch of remade scenes in CG instead of 2D animation. I am about to get deep into spoiler territory for the two Ghost in the Shell movies, so if you haven't seen either of them, I would highly suggest not watching this video right now. Watch those movies, then come back to this video, and enjoy. So, with that being said, I am now going to talk about Ghost in the Shell and Ghost in the Shell 2. Ghost in the Shell takes place in 2029. It follows a group of cybersecurity police called Public Security Sector 9. Sector 9 is made up of three main people. Bato, who is a partial cyborg. Togusa, who is an augmented human. And Major Motoko Kusanagi, who is a full prosthetic cyborg. Meaning that her entire body is a machine, and she's just controlling it from her cyber brain. In this movie, they go up against a Class A hacker known as the Puppet Master, or the Puppeteer, depending on which version you are watching. This movie is praised for its philosophical side, where they basically ask, what is a human? Is your human side your soul, and the thoughts that you have? Or is your human side connected to your physical body? If you separate your soul and your body, 
are those two humans? Are they no humans? Basically, what is a person? And this movie is widely influential. If this movie didn't exist, then the Matrix movies would not exist. And this movie is apparently James Cameron's inspiration for his Avatar movie, which is one of the highest grossing movies in the world. So this movie isn't just Japan famous and weeb famous, it's also worldwide famous. Now on to Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence, which basically retreads the same philosophical question from Ghost in the Shell 1, and this time the plot follows Bato and Togusa, because in the ending of the last movie, Mokoto's body is destroyed as she merges with the puppet master and uploads their brain onto the internet. This movie's plot basically follows Bato and Togusa as they investigate a string of murders carried out by sex robots. They eventually discover that these sex robots are crying for help. And as they go through a really crazy visual experience, they eventually end up to the manufacturer of these sex robots, and they find out that they are ghost dubbing people. Ghost dubbing basically means that they create several copies of someone's soul into a robot as they delete the original human. But to make that even worse, they are ghost dubbing children into these sex robots, and that's why they were murdering, was because they were afraid of everything that was happening to them. As for my opinions of these movies, I think the first movie is one that I would rewatch again, even though I technically did after watching 2.0. I think that movie had the most concise plot that mixed really well with all the philosophical stuff. Whereas the second movie, it had the most interesting plot, but you only get a sense of that plot in the first and third half, where the entire middle half kind of muddies it with its weird, visually stunning, but definitely weird interpretation of all of the philosophical things. I only have two complaints for these movies. The first is that there are some scenes in both movies that drag on too long. The walkabout scene with the Major in the first movie, and the parade scene and various city shots in the second movie. They feel like they only exist for the studio to flex their animation skills, and I think that if they were cut down, the movies wouldn't drag on too much. My second complaint is that the first movie feels like it starts in the middle of an existing storyline, and that we don't really know the people that we're supposed to be cheering on, so we have no reason to even do that. And as that movie ends, it feels so open, and the second movie doesn't really answer anything that's posed in the first movie. And there's actually a perfect explanation as to why those movies feel like that. And that's because the first Ghost in the Shell movie is an adaptation of the final storyline of the first manga. And the second Ghost in the Shell movie is just a standalone singular story in the middle of the first manga. So that's why the characters feel like we don't really know them, is because we have no introduction for anyone. And the second movie feels like it doesn't answer anything, because it's adapting something that chronologically shouldn't be taking place at that time. Instead of going with the complete ending that the author wrote for the manga, they just sort of 
added things into it to make it sort of connect to the first movie. Another very surprising thing is that the manga has a completely different tone and feel from the movies. The movies and the rest of the franchise are known for being neo-noir action movies and thrillers, but the manga is actually a comedy. It's a raunchy action comedy about police, and there are a ton of sex scenes in it. Actually, some of the sex scenes were so bad that they had to cut them out from certain publications of the manga. There are two types of Ghost in the Shell fans who are constantly arguing with each other. There are those who think that Mamoru Oshii was a hack who completely ruined a brilliant storyline. And then there are those who think that he's a hero who saved a brilliant storyline from being considered just hentai. And I can honestly see both sides of this argument. If Ghost in the Shell was a straight adaptation with all of the comedy and sex scenes, it would have never risen to this amount of global popularity and worldwide admiration. But I also think that if they had left in a bunch of the things that they cut out, we would have gotten a more comprehensive version of the story. And even if they made some of the tonal changes in their adaptation, but still gone with core chunks of the story, they would have ended up with something that could have been better than what we got. And that would have been very interesting to see. I think that there's still time to make a better, more direct adaptation. They don't have to take the comedy route if they want to, but I think with the success of Standalone Complex and how it's returning, and the success of the Arai series, that we could really get a better adaptation for Ghost in the Shell. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. So for now, I'm signing off, and I will see you next time.